Many aviation enthusiasts, hobbyists and historians clash about which aircraft design of the Second World War was the best. On the complete other end of such discussions are the bar fights over what the worst design was. While there were many horrible designs in aviation history, most never made it off the drawing board, and those that did mostly died as prototypes. However, in terms of actual production aircraft, one of the foremost poor designs that comes to mind is doubtlessly the Italian Breda BA-88. On paper, and during the early testing stages, it managed to break a few world speed records and appeared to be a highly promising design. However, once it was fully equipped with armament, bombs and other vital equipment, its performance dropped like a stone. The situation was so bad that some combat missions had to be abandoned because the BA-88s that were supposed to carry them out were unable to even take to the sky. Given that nothing else was available at the time, a limited number of these aircraft were pressed into service and saw some combat action, much to the dismay of their hapless crews. On the 20th of January 1936, the Italian Air Force issued a request for the development of a new twin-engine multi-purpose aircraft. The new plane needed to achieve a top speed of at least 470 km an hour, with an operational range of 2,000 km, which would enable it to cover significant distances and undergo long patrols. The aircraft was meant to be capable of reaching a height of 6 km in around 9 minutes. Armament was to consist of two to four 12.7mm machine guns or two 20mm cannons. The cockpit needed to provide a good all-round field of view to ensure that the pilot had excellent situational awareness, which is always crucial for both combat and reconnaissance missions. These specifications reflected the Italian Air Force's desire for a versatile and high-performance aircraft that could fulfil a variety of roles, including air superiority, ground attack and reconnaissance. All Italian aviation companies were invited to submit their proposals and many of them responded to this request. After considering different proposals, it was decided that, at least on paper, the Breda BA-88 appeared to be the most promising design. After the Breda was declared the winner of this competition, work on the first prototype was initiated. The BA-88 was designed as an all-metal, twin-engine, multi-purpose aircraft with a fuselage built using welded steel tubes. The whole fuselage construction was covered with duralumin sheets held in place by longitudinal stringers, rivets and bolts, while the wings were made using tube spars held in place by tube beams. This wing construction was then covered with sheet metal plates. It had two landing wheels that retracted backward into the engine nacelles, and the rear tail wheel was also retractable and could be steered if needed. The prototype was powered by two 900 horsepower Fraschini K14 engines, but the later production version would be powered by two 1000 horsepower Piaggio P11 14 cylinder radial piston engines. There were 12 armoured fuel tanks with a total capacity of 1379 litres, with two in the engine nacelles, four in the fuselage, and six in the wings. The BA-88 had a more or less standard cockpit layout with a rear sliding canopy. The pilot was provided with all the instruments needed to fly the BA-88. Seated with his back to the pilot was the machine gunner. The main armament consisted of three 12.7mm Breda Safat heavy machine guns with 1,250 rounds of ammunition each. The rear gunner operated one 7.7mm Breda Safat machine gun with 500 rounds of ammunition. Theoretically, the BA-88 could be equipped with a total bomb load of 1,000 kilograms, but this was never done due to the airframe's weight problems. The prototype of the BA-88 was completed relatively quickly and was ready in the autumn of 1936. Initial flight tests were conducted in October of 1936 with the aircraft piloted by Furio Niclot Dolio. During these tests, some potential weight issues were identified, but the development of the BA-88 continued on. 
In early February 1937, the prototype was moved to the Guidonia Experimental Center for further testing. In April of 1937, Furio managed to achieve an average speed of 518 km an hour during a 100 km long flight, which was actually a world speed record at the time. On the 10th of April, Furio managed to reach an average speed of 476 km an hour over a much longer distance of 1,000 km. Of course, the fascist regime was quick to take advantage of these results and trumpet them for propaganda purposes around the world. In order to further improve the BA-88's performance, the engines were replaced and the single vertical tail was replaced with twin fins and rudders. In November of 1937, the modified BA-88 made many more test flights. In early December, two new speed records were made. The first with 555 km an hour, and then 523 km an hour achieved. Throughout 1938, the prototype was used for various tests by the Italian Air Force, during which time many design problems began to emerge. Pilots noticed that the prototype was difficult to fly and manoeuvring was slow and heavy. In addition, it was discovered that the BA-88's maximum realistic speed was around 464 km an hour. Some in the Air Force doubted that anything could be done to improve this. The aircraft was criticised for various other flaws as well. For example, it was discovered that the pilot's canopy could not be opened during flight, which was a significant problem in case of an emergency bailout. With the installation of necessary military equipment and armament, the performance and flight characteristics deteriorated dramatically. Italian Army test pilots expressed concerns about its flight characteristics as even simple manoeuvres were hard to make. In the hope of fixing some of these issues, a number of weight-saving modifications were done during the war, but these problems would never be completely solved. The weight problem was so severe that the installation of bombs was only possible after removing much of the internal equipment. For these reasons, the Italian Air Force put BA-88 development on hold. Given the rising tension in Europe and the lack of more modern aircraft designs, the Italian Air Force simply could not afford to discard the time and resources invested into BA-88. With no other options, BA-88 was put into a small-scale production run. Of these, eight were built as dual-control trainers, with an added rear cockpit for the instructor in place of the rear machine gunner. By the time production stopped later, in 1940, between 148 to 155 BA-88s had been built in total. Interestingly, between 1938 and 1939, the BA-88 was advertised abroad, and several countries showed interest, namely Sweden, Yugoslavia, Switzerland and Lithuania, but no orders were placed. Distribution to military units began in May 1939. The first unit to receive BA-88 was the 76th Squadron of the 7th Group, followed by the 19th Group. By September of 1939, these two units had a total of 27 operational planes. Due to the outbreak of war in Europe, the Italian Air Force pressed into service any available aircraft, including the BA-88. Despite being originally designed as a multi-purpose aircraft, given its overall poor performance, it would only be used in the ground attack role. In May of 1940, the Germans launched their attack against the Western Allies in France and the Low Countries. With the Allied resistance quickly collapsing and sensing an opportunity, the Italians quickly joined the Germans and declared war on the Allies. On the 16th of June, 12 planes made several bombing raids on airfields in Corsica. The next day, the attack was repeated with nine BA-88s. By the 19th of June, the battle was over. Italian combat analysis of these air attacks led to the conclusion that the BA-88 had only limited value as an operational aircraft. The BA-88 would see more action in the North African theatre of war. The Italians employed them there because they simply lacked more modern ground attack aircraft, or even sufficient older ones. 
The BA-88 from the 7th Grupo arrived in Libya in August 1940, but they were not immediately sent to the front lines, as they needed to be adapted for desert conditions. By September, they were finally ready to commence combat operations. The first combat mission involved bombing Sidi El Barani, a British airfield about 250 kilometers behind the front. The attack was launched on the 14th of September, but failed, as the BA-88s were not able to take to the sky successfully. Two BA-88s had to return to the airfield as their pilots could not maintain flight. The third aircraft did not even manage to take off from the airfield. All three aircraft were fully equipped with armament, fuel and bombs, but the engines simply did not have sufficient power to maintain the aircraft in the sky. In a desperate attempt to improve the performance, all unnecessary internal equipment and the rear gunner positions were removed. By October, only 10 BA-88s were fully operational, down from a total of 29. On the 14th of October 1940, three BA-88s from the 98th Squadron were ordered to attack British armed forces around Sidi El Barani and Bir Emba but they failed to locate their targets. The next day, while on a reconnaissance mission, one was damaged by Italian anti-aircraft fire, as it was mistaken for a British plane. Due to its disappointing performance, the BA-88s were removed from service. By the 16th of November, the 7th Group had only two or three fully operational aircraft left. Because of the problems, most if not all surviving BA-88 had been stripped of all useful equipment and armament, and were scattered around major airfields, mostly to act as decoys for British attack aircraft, finally receiving a job they could actually be good at. Extraordinarily, despite being rejected from further military use, a second series of 60 to 70 BA-88s was completed. None were used to equip any military units, and most were scrapped or used as target practice. In a desperate attempt to reuse the few operational BA-88s, the Italian Air Force had them modified as dive bombers. The first tests were carried out at the Guidonia Experimental Center air tunnel. There, different types of underwing brakes were tested, including the ones used on the German Junkers Ju-87. In order to save weight, the Piaggio engines were replaced with less powerful, but much lighter, Fiat A74s. Great attention was given to reducing the weight as much as possible. This was followed by reducing the fuel capacity, removing the rear machine gun turret position, the wing-mounted bomb racks, and the lower front machine gun. Four BA-88s, together with one dual-control version, were modified this way. These received the BA-88A74 designation. After a series of flight tests, their overall performance was deemed still disappointing and the project was abandoned. A last-ditch attempt of saving this catastrophe of a plane was made in the summer of 1942. One BA-88A74 was modified with an 80cm longer fuselage and a wider wingspan of 2.3 meters and parts of the metal wing construction were replaced with wooden panels. This received the BA-88M designation, with the M standing for modified. The Italian Air Force gave orders to modify as many BA-88 as possible, with a group of 40 improved BA-88s to be formed. By the end of July 1943, around 12 BA-88s were gathered for modification and a few completed BA-88Ms were allocated to the 103rd Independent Dive Bombing Group. None of the BA-88M were used in combat and, as the Germans occupied Italy, all surviving plane were scrapped for materials. This concludes our look at the BA-88. While the Italians had some good aircraft designs, and some that are just so beautiful, the BA-88 was a poor design that should never have reached production. What do you think about this? Does it deserve the reputation of being the worst aircraft of the Second World War? Let us know in the comments. If you like what we do and want to see more, remember to subscribe so you don't miss a single video. 
Also, don't forget to take a look at our extensive collection of articles on our website, plain-encyclopedia.com. Thank you.